It's been stated time and time again that Kaylee had moved out of the King Road house. But why? Why would she move out early, before graduation, when all of the celebrations were about to begin and she was about to leave the University of Idaho for good? It seems strange that she would move out during this time while her furniture was still inside the house and she was still paying rent. Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I want to talk a little bit about something that I've been thinking about as far as Kaylee moving out of the King Roadhouse early. Now, why would Kaylee move from the King Roadhouse before graduation and before what would seem like when the celebrations were about to begin? It seems as though Kaylee would want to be around her friends because this was going to be her last time at the University of Idaho. But for some reason, Kaylee felt the need to leave the King Roadhouse and felt that it was important enough to continue paying rent while she wasn't living there as well as leaving her furniture in her bedroom at the house. It could have definitely been a scheduling situation or something like that. Or it could be that Kaylee just did not want to live in this house any longer. She had plans to go to Europe. And after that, she was taking a job in Texas. But this was after graduation. And Kaylee still had some loose ends to tie up before she was officially finished with college. So it would have been more convenient for Kaylee to be close to campus as she was finishing up the last things that she needed to do before she graduated. This was right before winter break when all of the students would have been going back home for the vacation. So these students would have been partying. It seems as though Kaylee would have wanted to be in this environment. It seems like most 21-year-old college students would want to be in this environment, spending time with their friends and, you know, spending time with people around this campus before they graduated. Because after she graduated... She was moving on, and this would have been her last, you know, time as a student at the University of Idaho. So it seems as though it would be a place that Kaylee would want to be. It would seem like a lot of fun. So why would Kaylee remove herself from this situation? Christy Gonzalez had stated in an interview that Kaylee had moved into the King Roadhouse in June. So she had moved out before November. So she really only lived in the King Roadhouse for five months approximately. But her things were still inside the house because it was reported that Kaylee had listed her bedroom furniture for sale which was still inside her bedroom at the King Roadhouse. Christy Gonzalez also stated in an interview that Kaylee was hesitant to go back to the King Roadhouse, that Kaylee was kind of going back and forth and she was conflicted about whether she should return to the King Roadhouse. Now, ultimately, she decided to go back because she really wanted to show Maddie the car that she had just purchased on her own. But why was she hesitant to go back to her own house? What was there? What was at the King Road house that would make her not want to go back? All of Kaylee's things were there, her bedroom furniture, and her best friend still lived inside this house. Kaylee was still paying rent, because she was paying out her lease. 
So why wouldn't Kaylee want to return back to her house? One of the things that I noticed when I was watching the grub truck footage and watching the ring cam footage of them walking to the grub truck and the picture of them at the corner club was that it seemed to me, and maybe it just felt like that to me, but it felt like Kaylee and Maddie were on their own. With the exception of Jack S., of course. It was just Kaylee and Maddie having a casual night. You know, they just went to the local bar and then went to grab some food. So it didn't seem as though, you know, they were really part of the party. Or that they were doing a whole lot of celebrating other than having a few drinks at the corner club. Now, at the grub truck... They appear to be laughing and having a good time. You can see in the video that, you know, Kaylee's joking and and Maddie's, well, Maddie seems to be rather intoxicated and she does seem to get a little angry at the grub truck for a second. But they seem to be having, you know, a good time at the grub truck between Kaylee and Maddie. But with the exception of Jack S just kind of hanging around in the background, and we're going to get to that, It seems as though as you're watching this footage that Kaylee and Maddie were on their own. And, you know, video footage and security cam photographs and stuff like that, they're always really washed out. So they do seem, they always appear to be kind of gloomy. But one of the things that I always thought about when I was watching this footage is that for some reason, I just always felt like Kaylee and Maddie were alone. Now, Jack S., I do believe, after kind of doing a bunch of research about him and stuff like that, I do believe that Jack S. was there to protect Kaylee and Maddie. Jack S. is keeping a really close eye on the girls. And there would be a reason for that. It would seem odd to the girls if they didn't know why he was there. And they do appear to be interacting with him at certain points in the footage. So, the girls know that he's there. He's not just, you know, they know he's there. And I believe that they know why he's there. Now, Jack S., he keeps a short distance, but enough distance to kind of let them do their own thing and not be in the way. You know, the girls may not have wanted him there because they don't appear to include him in anything. He just kind of seems to be hanging around in the background. But... The manner in which Jack S. is there kind of tells me that he was there in a protector kind of situation. You know, if he was just watching the girls to see what they were doing and to, you know, watch where they were going to be, he could have done that from a lot further away. He didn't have to do that from such a short distance. In my opinion, the reason that Jack S. is keeping this short distance to the girls, but also giving them a little space, is because he wants to be close to them in case something goes down. He wants to be able to reach them quickly. So, it does appear that the manner in which Jack S. is around the girls this night is to try to protect them. He was with them all night, and he maintains this distance. To me, this distance is close enough that if something were to happen, Jack S. could get to the girls quickly. So it kind of tells me that Jack S. may have believed 
that the girls were in danger. I think that Kaylee and Maddie knew exactly why Jack S. was there. And I think that Jack S. may have felt like it was important to keep an eye on them. Now, why would he feel that way? Unless he felt like there was some sort of danger that could happen to Kaylee and Maddie. And why would he think that they were in danger? You know, when Kaylee and Maddie get their food and then they ditch Jack and run for their ride, Jack reacts by just kind of throwing his hands up in the air. And he seems obviously very frustrated. And the more that I watch the footage, the more that I think that maybe he did that because he's thinking to himself, why would these two girls put themselves in danger? Why would they ditch their protector and maybe put themselves in more danger? The more that I watched the footage of the girls of Kaylee and Maddie out that night, the more I do believe that Jack S. was there in a protector situation. As I said, if Jack S. really just wanted to watch the girls just to know where they were at or maybe watch them in some creepy way, he could have done that from a lot further away. He didn't really need to be just a few steps from them just to see what they were doing. So that's something that I've been thinking about. And also, if Jack S. was just with the girls that night in order to protect them, as he told Joe Vito at the grub truck that that was exactly what he was doing, it would seem as though Jack might be aware that these girls were in possible danger. And it would also make me wonder if Jack S. did return back to the King Roadhouse to make sure that the girls got home safely. Jack S. basically lived next door to the girls. So I know that it's been said that Jack S. ended up driving five and a half hours after leaving the grub truck to his parents' cabin. But it seems as though Jack S. would have needed to go back home and maybe get some things before he set off on his trip at 2 a.m. in the morning. So did Jack S. go back to the King Roadhouse after he left the grub truck to check on the girls? It just seems strange to me that Kaylee moves out of her house where she lives with her lifelong best friend early before she graduates. She still has obligations on campus before she graduates. So it seems like it would be more convenient for her to be at the King Roadhouse and be close to the University of Idaho campus. Now, This is Kaylee's last year. She's graduating. So it seems as though she would want to be around her friends, celebrating, and, you know, around these people that she's gone to college with because Kaylee's graduating, and this is going to be the last time that she's a student at the University of Idaho. She's also still paying rent because she's paying out her lease. So why would she continue to pay rent and just not live in the house? It seems as though something would have happened that would made her that would make her want to move out of this house and feel like it was worth still paying rent to not have to live there. So it seems as though Kaylee would want to be around this house, around her friends, before she graduates. But instead, she's moved out, and now she's hesitant to even go back. 
She's technically still a roommate in this house. And her best friend Maddie still lives there. Kaylee talks herself into going back because she's excited to show Maddie the new car that she just bought. While she's in Moscow, Idaho, Jack S. feels as though they need protection. So it's very possible that he was actually protecting them all night long. Then they ditch him and two hours later they lose their lives? Jack was protecting the girls, in my opinion. But there's also the possibility that he could have been concerned and been protecting just one of the girls. And the other one just happened to be there. So Jack S., it's very possible, felt like it was very important for him to keep an eye on Kaylee and Maddie that night. But why would Jack feel that way unless he knew that something was wrong? Now, it's been stated that law enforcement believes that one of these roommates was the target. And it's been rumored that Maddie was the target. So Maddie was the target and Jack S. was keeping an eye on Maddie and Kaylee that night. When Jack S. throws his hands up as the girls are running for their ride from the grub truck, it's almost as though he's saying, what are you doing? It's almost as though Jack knows that Either one of the girls or both of them were in danger. Something was definitely going on. There was something that was happening that I believe that Jack was aware of. You know, what about the roommate who was living on the first floor, who wasn't staying in the room, but she was still paying rent? She had moved out, but she was still paying rent on that downstairs bedroom. So that's two out of the six roommates who lived in the house who moved out and felt like it was worth it for them to continue paying rent until their lease was up, but not living in the King Road house. So that seems very strange because they would rather pay for a room that they're not using than live at this house. So Kaylee moved out of the house early and then was hesitant to return back to that house, which seems very strange because it's almost as though something happened in that house that Kaylee didn't want to live there anymore. So then she had to talk herself into going back to the King Road house. And then that Saturday night, when her and Maddie go out to the corner club and and they're at the bar, Jack S. is right there watching them protecting them, staying within a close distance so that he can reach them quickly in case something goes down. And then two hours later, both Maddie and Kaylee lose their lives. So it just seems like a very strange sequence of events for people who didn't know what was going on. It seems like something had to be going on. And Kaylee and Maddie and Jack S. all knew what was going on. So it seems like 
something led up to this. And as I've said from the very beginning, I believe that this was a reaction to an action. So something led up to these crimes. You know, this was a targeted attack. So this wasn't random. This was a person or people who wanted to get to this person inside the King Road house. So something had to happen in order for that individual to feel as though they wanted to get to this target. Which would mean that it wasn't random. It was something, you know, it was something that led up to these crimes. Now, stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to be going back to the Rust incident, and we're going to be talking about where did these live rounds come from. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. If you liked my video, please hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you next time.